This beauty is 100 years old in 2023. We're here to find out how Citizen have helped not only refurbish this, but taken historic threads to the next level. It enabled us to make parts quicker and easier. Um, more complex parts are a dream now. You wouldn't have imagined making like that part when I first started in engineering. But with Citizen, they have, yeah, they proved themselves. We visited DWS Engineering about four years ago when they made their first purchase of a second-hand Citizen machine. Things have changed massively since then, but they've, going back to the first purchase, why did you buy that machine and what was it? It was a Citizen L32, a 2001 machine. Um, it's helped us progress the business to making nuts and bolts a lot faster and more efficient than what we would have done on our machines prior on to having that. Okay, so you bought it four years ago, it's a 2001 machine. Have Citizen given you the support service because you know it's going to have a few niggles. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. The older ones are a bit, bit finicky, but um, yeah, they get by and it's still working quite well now. Well, you say it's still working quite well because it's changed the dynamic of your whole business really, hasn't it? Because it's more about, as it says in the T-shirt, historic threads. Yeah, yeah. So we're doing a lot of nuts and bolts for the classic car industry, restoration industry. It's a huge. Um, business to get into nuts steam and bolts. Steam engines? And steam engines, yes. Absolutely. So you got the L32, but then you thought, right, let's, we need another machine. What did you get then? Uh, so then we bought an M32 last year. Um, that that machine has helped with the workload. and it's, a, it's just as fast as our older L32, but it's enabled us to do more complex parts as what we were doing. Okay, and that was, a, that was another 2001 machine though? Yes, it was, yes. And you know, four years ago you had your first slider. How was it in terms of programming and application? The guys, the guys there have helped you out? Yeah, they helped us out. They gave us a few um, basic programs to go from and anything that's really complex, they just send us the whole program to get it, plug it in and play. Okay, and then next step was this beauty here. So this is your L32 Type 8 LFV. Why have you bought it? Um, to help with the workload again, because we're so busy. And I fancied something with, with more modern technology in, especially with the LFE and the option to go to 38 mil as well. Um, so that's that's helping our with our products as well. Okay, so when you it's a thir obviously 32 mil bar, you've got an expansion kit and going non guy bush or yeah. mix and match? Yeah, so we've got 38 expansion kit, non guy bush mode. Okay, and how's the LFE helped? And it, people who don't know, low frequency vibration. Yes, yeah, so uh, the chipping software is great. It's some of the problems we were having on the other machines. You put the job on here, you don't get anywhere near the issues you get with birds' nests and swarf problems. So just set it, let it run, thousands off, two thousands off? Yeah, yeah, when we get those numbers, yeah. yeah. Okay, but it's not about big batch numbers either, because you said, you know, what small quantities do you do sometimes? Uh, not for us, no, we can run a ten of on the, on the others or even on this one, yeah. But is it cost effective? Is it not take yeah, long? Yeah, it seems to be, no, we can, we can get them set pretty quickly now between us, yeah. yeah normally about half an hour to change a job, not too bad. Right, so those out there thinking, I need big batch runs, that's not the case at all? No, not at all, no, not with us. If we're, we got the M normally set up on the small can channel set, so we, we can run up to 16 mil with that one. The older L's on 32 all the time, and then this one can go up to 38. Okay, now, as we mentioned, historic threads is about historic nuts and bolts, sort of pre-war and Whitworth style. Yes, that's right, yeah. But it's not just about the nuts and bolts, which you know, makes some complex uh, materials, but I want to go through some of the other things you're actually manufacturing. So this one, I'm thinking here, relatively simple. It's not too bad, that one, yeah. Uh, LFE's, LFE's help, it's a, it's a new product of ours. It's a, a tool for putting in fencing staples. Um, we call it a staple driver. Um, it will soon be in retailing in some of the agricultural stores nationwide. Um, yeah, we make it on, is one of the main reasons I bought the new L32 was for that, that job. Okay, so turned a bit of milling there and then etching. Yeah, that engraving, that's all done on the machine. That's, help, that's all done on the wizard. You just type in what you want on the wizard and it gives you the code, copy and paste, set the tools and off you go. So there you go, make it sound very easy. So using the yeah. Alcott wizard as a, as a programming system. Yeah. Okay, so that's your new product. Give that a little yeah. bit of a plug. Let's just yeah. reiterate, what was it called? <laughs> a staple driver. A staple driver. Now this component here, I'm thinking pretty straightforward. Uh, no, that one was one of the first jobs I did on this machine, so it was it was a bit of a learning curve as well. Um, There's a lot of setting involved and a lot of milling. Um, LFE did come into it because that, that part came out of a 32 mil bar. Um, yes, yeah, so a lot of metal had to come off. To yeah, get a lot of material removal there. Yeah. So that's where LFE really came into into its. Form. Yeah, yeah. So it was a it was quite a big depth of cut. I think that's only about six mil from 32. So you know, there was a whole insert taking the taking the cut at once. Okay, and then here's your, bread and, here's your bread and butter, which is what you're manufacturing at the moment. Yeah, stainless nuts, um, Whitworth, three-quarter Whitworth stainless nuts, yeah. 
nice and simple, but you're making sort of hundreds, thousands of these at a time. Yeah, we do. I think there's a batch of 100 normally just for stock. Um, they, they, it's one of our best sellers, the three quarter whip with nut. There you go. And that'll be going on your vintage cars, your vintage steam rollers. Well, steam engines normally, yeah, that sort of size. Okay, so relatively, I mean, those parts relatively short, but then one of your more, well, complex yeah. parts, could we say? Yeah, that's, I think that one has the record for us for the longest part then on the slider. Um, 316 stainless, um, some very tight tolerances, 05 run out, 05 on diameters. Is that on your cross drilling you've got that tight tolerance? Yeah, the, the, the position of the cross hole and the, the, the diameters all the way down through. Okay, and here, this isn't a mismatch, is it? This is intentional? No, there's a, yeah, there's a diameter there, but I think it's point 0.1 difference. Yeah. Right, so, but again, tolerances yeah, and not across a, a whole length, not a problem at yeah, all. Yeah. And we just got it, just to confirm, it's drilled and tapped at the end drilled there as well. At the end. Yeah, that was a four minute part, that was quite impressive. Impressive stuff. Okay, and then last but not least, and I do, I, I sort of recognise this from my uh, 19, <laughs> can I just say my 1922 Rolls Royce? Talk me through <laughs> what you've actually done with this component and, and the complexities of it, please. Um, so yeah, that's another stainless part, long turned. I think that's about three minutes, that part. Um, left hand Whitworth thread on the end. Um, a bit of milling up the other end. Um, yeah, that mi done. milling is going to be quite complex because you've got to get in there quite tight tolerances. Again. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that, that, that part was really tied up with the tolerances. And um, yeah, all finished in one hit. Yeah. There you go. Making it sound very, very simple. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got your radius in there as well. Just to yeah, there's, add, add a, there's to the a lot going on on that part. Okay. So there you go. That's from my 1922 Rolls Royce. <laughs> but with the help of Citizen, though, just to clarify, it's, it's not so much DW engineering anymore, it's more historic threads. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And they've taken you to that next level. Mm. Yes, it has. Yeah. So just to summarise, how have they done that? Um, enabled us to make parts quicker and easier. Um, more complex parts are a dream now. You would have imagined making like that part when I first started in engineering. But with Citizen, they have yeah, they proved themselves. Yeah. Dave, there you go. I think that sums it up really well. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dave from Historic Threads. And I'm going to have this in my car, if that's, that's all right. That's all right, yeah, carry on. Thank <laughs> you.